Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Scorpio in May 2021. What's going on, Scorpio? How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. Scorpio, wherever you are in the world right now, I hope you are safe, happy, healthy, and secure. Continue to take very good care of yourselves and those that you know and love, okay? Uh, no other announcements or no announcements at all in May. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Scorpio, anything you want from me, it is in the description box. Timestamp is down there. Information on how to book a personal reading with me is down there. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I give you a link for that down below as well, okay? That's the start of your reading. We're going to read into that in just a moment. We're going to clarify a little bit more or get a bigger message with the same deck as well as talk about the overall energy uh, a little bit later, okay? So first card out was Seven of Cups. Second was Adjustment, a.k.a. Um, Justice. Thank you. And then the Tower in the reverse. I don't know why I like stop talking there real quick um so maybe that's indicative of something maybe some of you have like a lapse in communication or like you're not talking to someone or whatever but uh hmm. uh well i think scorpio you're in <laughs> shifting things are shifting things are changing in your life um, this tower in the reverse is like really, I think, tongue in cheek is, is the phrase they're giving me. I'm not sure that it necessarily applies, but I think it's like a fake out or I think it's like <laughs> either from where you're standing or where someone else is standing. It doesn't look like it's that bad, but it actually is that bad. You, you know what I mean? It's like, so tongue in cheek, I don't think it applies, but it's, it's, it's like, not <laughs> it could be you Scorpio I mean you are that type to you know and please don't take offense to this but it's kind of like <laughs> trying to paint a pretty pretty picture when the reality is quite awful um now I you know that's all relative and it's all subjective to your different experiences as this is a general collective reading but get, but again I feel as though you or someone you're dealing with is trying to make a situation that's very topsy-turvy, if not hanging on by a thread or hanging on, you know, like by the, what's that, by your fingertips or something like that. It's like something is very precarious with the image on the, uh, the justice card being here, right? There's a very precarious balancing act that you or someone else is doing and they're kind of making it seem like it's not a big deal now that could be a strategy seven of seven of cups there that could be a strategy or some it's a it's it's an option it's a choice you know seven of cups it's a choice so someone chooses to paint this pretty picture and again that could be for strategic gain right so if this was like let's say this was a business transaction or something going on in your professional life and maybe your boss or someone you're working for is like piling work on you day in, day out, just new things to do. All these kind of curveballs are coming from vendors or clients and it's just a whole shit show, right? But because you want a promotion or because you, whatever, whatever your long-term design is, whatever your long-term goal is, if you make it seem like it's not that hard or it's not getting to you, then your boss is more than like, this is possibly what you or someone is thinking. The boss is going to be like, oh, look at Scorpio, like just take on this work and they're not complaining and they're not sweating bullets and they're fine. Everything is fine, even though it's a kerfuffle with the tower being here, right? But painting this picture as if nothing is wrong could be a long-term strategy in someone's favor. Or at least that's what they think. Because, you know, <laughs> what's here on the Seven of Cups, or Seven of Water more specifically in this deck, is a mirage. And the word at the bottom there, there is what? Illusion. So, you or someone else is creating an illusion that they think is beneficial. They're trying to play some type of long game here, or there's some goal in the distance, in the distance, mirage right 
those camels are in the foreground and, and what's the illusionary part is, is, is in the background there. So it's at a distance. So in the distance, there's something to be gained. Someone wants something to be gained, but will they succeed? Will they get there? Oh, no. Um, because again, I'm really, really like, mm, with this adjustment card, with that justice card there, it's so precarious. And the tower coming in the reverse, it can indicate subtle upheaval or kerfuffle again. It, or it could be a delay to some mayhem. It could be a delay to some type of destruction or things falling to pieces. So again, it's like painting over something. Like a, like a patch job, patchwork. And I don't want to, you know, piss on your parade or something like that, Scorpio. But it does feel like the other shoe has yet to drop. And when it does, that's when all of this is going to be for naught. And I'm not, you know, that's not me trying to forecast because it's just the feeling that's here, you know. And I hope it doesn't come to that because I don't want anybody to lose. Because I, what I'm sensing here is somebody who's really giving it their all. Somebody who's really trying to do what's right in the situation. Justice in the center here. Trying to do what's right. Trying to do what's fair. Trying to get to a certain outcome of favorability. But it doesn't feel like it's going to go that way. It could, you know. It could, but in several of your cases, I just feel like it's going to... It's going to fall to pieces anyway. And that's more so away from a working situation. So let me go ahead and explore that because that's what's coming through here. The work situation, it might go in your favor. You know, very much, you know, up in the air. You know, it could. You know, and, and there's potentiality here also with the seven of water. If we're talking about other situations, family dynamics, romantic dynamics, personal goals that you have for yourself it's not to say that you're doomed for failure in these other areas no but i think there's more moving parts because what what did i mention family and romance and and you could also extend that to friends so that involves other people work is very it's it does involve other people but if you're given tasks if you're put on projects it's just a matter of getting certain documents or data and things you know to to move in a certain way it's a lot easier to for lack of a better word quote unquote manipulate those types of those types of situations than interpersonal relationships it's also easier to work on projects and handle you know inanimate situations and objects than it is to do that manipulation with yourself because we all have, you know, demons and habits and shortcomings and pitfalls and all these things. So I feel as though some of you, like if it was a situation where, you know, you're trying to, you know, overcome some type of addiction or you're trying to overcome some type of spending habit or something like that, which is, you know are pretty much detrimental to the self you know i mean i suppose addiction and overspending can be detrimental to other people but let's say you're solo dolo you don't have close friends or family to speak of those are behaviors and actions that adversely affect you so it's kind of like you're painting a pretty picture to yourself either knowing or subconsciously being aware that eventually you're going to sabotage that picture anyway and this is, again, not me saying you can't get over this or that you're doomed for this. No, but that's the energy that's here. It's like trying to fool other people or fool yourself. I, I don't know. It's like I believe in the power of transformation and redemption and all these things. But in this energy, this opening energy, it feels like a mirage. It feels like someone is lying to themselves or, or, or trying to to perpetrate something that isn't fully the truth or is, you know, trying to say, I can handle it. No, you can't. And that's, again, I'm, I hate to, I hate for this to come through. And maybe this is a dialogue that you're having with yourself. Part of you is like, we can do this and we can overcome it. And another part of you is like, no, we can't. We're the worst. We're, we're always bound for failure. I don't know whose energy this is or where it's coming from. It can come from external people. It doesn't have to be within you. 
it just feels like oh god it's, it's heavy it's murky i don't like it um but let's get more information here um hmm. so what else is going on here scorpio what else is going on in this situation for scorpio show me hmm. It's like every card wants to fall out of my hand. Father of Fire, aka King of Wands. Everything wants to fall. And of course! <sighs> I say of course, and we're going to get the bottom of the deck just a second. I say of course because these energies have been repeating this month and this bottom of the deck. So a lot of repetitive energies this month. I think we're in a retrograde month. I don't know. I, can't, I, I have not been up on the astrology. The new job has... Uh, it's really sidelined a lot of my personal development in terms of, like, reading and stuff like that. Anyway, so Father of Fire, a.k.a. King of Wands, Lovers, Major Arcana for Gemini. You could be dealing with a Gemini. You don't have to be. And the Hierophant, Major Arcana for Taurus. Same deal. Could be dealing. Don't have to be. All right. So, Yeah. Some of you are definitely dealing in a work situation or in a in a dynamic with other people or one particular person that speaks to your stability, speaks to where you not find value, but create value or tap into value. Meaning if it's not your boss, maybe it's like a maybe it's like a community leader and maybe you volunteer or if it's not anything to do Maybe it's like with your family, like maybe your family is like working on a project together or, you know, renovating a home or selling a home. There's something about where your footing is, where your foundation is. That's where the pretty picture is being painted. It could be work, could be family, could be romance, could be friends, could be any of these places, could be a ton of things. But I feel Scorpio... Like, you or someone else just kind of isn't meant for this. I don't want to say bit off more than can than you or they could chew. I don't think it's that. I feel that whoever this is, it could be you, could be someone that you're dealing with. I think that they're just no longer on this same road. Or soon will be on a different road. King of Wands, very independent, very independent minded, very independent person in terms of their spiritual self. And they don't have to be like a guru or something like that. But I'm just sensing somebody who, quote unquote, cannot be tamed or can no longer abide by whatever they've been abiding by. I feel there's a change in the wind and this person, male or female, fire sign or not, they are wanting to ride that new wave wherever the wind is going they want to go that way you know what i mean um interesting and also like he kind of looks like he's you know sun kissed if not sunburnt um so it does kind of look like this person you know just as the illustration is coming across it kind of looks like somebody who does have uh, a very outdoorsy What is the word? Like attachment to to the outdoors, like literally like. And maybe it's an offensive term. If it is, I, I apologize. But it feels like this is like and again, it doesn't have to be this person. I'm talking about the illustration like a beach bum, like, you know, I'm not I have no idea. I have no idea what this culture is like, but like surfer culture where people will spend 20, 30, 40 years surfing. And they're not professionals. It's not their, it's not how they make their money, but it's their hobby or it's their, pa beyond a hobby, it's their passion, okay? And I assume if you want to be friends with, date, work alongside somebody who has a passion such as surfing, you got to get used to them going out and chasing waves literally for days on end or hours on end at the very least, right? So let's use that 
metaphor or example. It's very specific, but I hope you I hope you can follow me. So say this was a surfer person, male or female, doesn't matter. And you want to marry this person, but they love surfing beyond anything else. Or, or it's their, again, it's their passion. They must do it. So I'm assuming they need to travel to places like Hawaii, Australia, Florida, wherever, big coastal places to get their fix. Now, if you live in good old Boise, shout out to Boise, okay, this person will not be contented to live in Boise forever or, or put roots down in Boise because surfing, it's their passion. They must do that. Yes? So that's what I'm feeling here. There's a passion that somebody has that is out of line or out of step with the foundation that they're a part of that they may have created or signed up for at some point because the lovers here is a choice. So I feel possibly in the past, you or someone else has decided on something that they now want to undecide, if that makes sense. So you might have decided to work for a place and you're doing your best, like I said, painting this pretty picture to keep up with your work, to keep up with the demands of your clients, to keep up with the demands of your boss. But now your passion lies elsewhere. Again, there's a change in the wind and you or someone else wants to go where that change is. It's not abandoning. Because the King of Wands wouldn't necessarily do that as much as I talked about the surfer and like, and all that. It's really someone who is aware of and I would hope would have an honest discussion and or um, just realize it's just like no excuses. Kings normally don't make excuses. They give rhyme to their reason. Okay, there there are rhymes and reasons and, and, and methods behind the madness and all those cliched phrases. So whoever this is, I think that they can explain themselves. They can articulate why they sudden, seemingly suddenly don't want this anymore. Now, that is a hard pill to swallow for themselves or for other people or both because there is a rich history here and that's four major arcana i just now that i'm doing this little circle here that's four major arcana so this has deep roots whatever situation this is whatever relationship this is it has deep roots it's not something that was created overnight but it seemingly with the tower in the reverse. And again, what we talked about earlier, painting that picture, you know, precarious balance, trying to work things out, trying to, you know, power through and not be, become overwhelmed. It wasn't built up overnight, but it kind of can fall overnight. And you or someone else doesn't want that to happen, but someone else is kind of like, but it must happen. Or if it falls away, I'm okay with that. Or if it becomes too much, then I'll just turn. And again, it's not abandoned. I will release from it. Let's say it that way, releasing. Um, it might strike as being very selfish because what I'm sensing is there could, in terms of business or any type of partnership, really, what I'm sensing is, and in the, in the lover's right there too, and the Hierophant here being a card of marriage. So for some of you, this is a romantic partnership. Others of you, it's a business partnership. Either way, you have two people who agree to something. Now one person disagrees and the person who's left standing, holding all the, all the marbles, so to speak, or th someone might be feeling like they've been left in a lurch. Now, literally... I keep saying it's not about abandonment. This this could all be about perspective. I'm not necessarily speaking in objective truth. But I feel this person over here, they really don't feel that they've abandoned anything. Whether you would agree or disagree, that's up to you. Um, because again, you're all living different experiences. And again, I'm just really related to, I'm relating to, thank you, relating to how this person is feeling and thinking and their perspective is, I have not abandoned anything. In fact, I've liberated myself or liberated you or other people by choosing to go this other direction. 
everyone else and myself will be better off in the long run. Something like that is coming from this 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 King of Wands here. Very interesting. Um, so and and again, this is justice, or and this is lovers and hierophants. So for some of you, and the Tower in reverse. For some of you, this is a divorce. One person wants it, the other person doesn't. Or it's a divorce that's pending, meaning. Mm, interesting. It's a, it's a situation where maybe you don't get divorced, it's separation, or it's not even separation, but it's, it's unspoken divorce, perhaps. It's like, again, painting this picture. It's easier to stay, apparently, from what I understand, I've known a couple people who have gone through divorces, it's easier to stay married, like technically on paper. Because to file paperwork and pay the fees and get people to sign papers and stuff like that. I, I've known people who were seeking divorces for years. Like four or five years. And then it's finally finalized. But y'all have been, quote unquote, divorced since the beginning. But for four or five years, you put a print, you know, you paint the picture. You don't want the family to know. You do it for the kids. Uh, you know, again, it's just like, well, you're working and there's benefits and, and you guys own property. Got, there's a whole litany of reasons of why it's easier to remain technically married. And that could be why this tower is in the reverse. You're technically together, but spiritually, emotionally, mentally, maybe even also physically, you're divorced. The, the only true thing that keeps you bound is a piece of paper or again, you know, putting on a strong face for the family. Does that make sense? Oh, God. Listen, that's not everybody's story. Just that. <laughs> All right. So overall energy is the fool. I feel that Scorpio, many of you, if not most of you are at a precipice. You know, a big cliff moment. That's typically what's on the fool card. Um, like a, a guy in like jester garb or very ornate clothing and he's like prancing off at tiptoeing near a ledge. That's what I feel you guys feel like or that's sort of the energy that you're in is like I'm so close to the edge I could just fall off if I'm not careful. But when we talk about that type of energy or, or that prospect in tarot, the fool doesn't care. He's not afraid of dancing near the edge, of prancing and tiptoeing near the edge and possibly falling off a cliff. Most depictions of the fool, and this one would be included, do not depict fear. Does that baby look scared? Looks very, very comforted. Very, very, <laughs> like, no worries, right? So... You or someone else, you're not necessarily in the quote unquote correct vibe of the fool. Like I said, fool has no worries, has no cares, very, very carefree. That's where you want to be. But some of you are not there or the people that you're dealing with are not there. They're afraid of the cliff. They're afraid of falling. And if you're familiar with the tarot the traditional depiction of this card, think about that. We don't see how far down that cliff is. Is it 50 feet? Is it five feet? Is there something below that the fool could fall onto, even if it is 50 feet? Do we, are there people or some apparatus below that would catch the fool if they were to fall? You know what I mean? So it's a matter of perspective. We don't know all there is to know. When, when the fool is here and that not worrying about the details is the is sort of the liberating part of it. Scorpio, that's your reading for uh, May. If this reading resonated with you, uh, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. If you choose to share how it resonated, I would love to read that. If you have not subscribed to the channel before, please do so now and make sure that you hit the notification bell so you can see when I do uploads to the channel. Scorpio, if you would like to get at me for a personal reading, you can find that information down below on how to do that, okay? 
I thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Take care. Bye.